Jamie Richards, uh, it's a, a massive weekend of racing coming up here in Hong Kong and a huge one for you, of course. You've got Wellington lining up in the sprint. Here we are at the barrier draw. He's got gate three. How happy are you with where he's berthed? Yeah, I think it uh, should, should suit him well, hopefully. He's going to get a bit of cover from there and um, hopefully they go along at a genuine tempo and he, and he gets his chance. But um, didn't want to draw too far in and didn't want to draw too far out, so no complaints. You've inherited, Jamie, of course, a, a world-class sprinter, a top sprinter here in Hong Kong. That goes without saying. He's last year's winner of this race. How has he been since he's joined you, obviously? He's, he's done so much before, and I'm sure you're hoping he can do a lot more still to come. Yeah, for sure. He's uh, obviously arrived in great order from Richard Gibson upon his retirement from training here in Hong Kong, and very thankful to the owners for the opportunity to train the horse. Um, he's had a good, easy preparation. He ran well first up, and... Um, it's just been a matter of keeping him happy and ticking him over for the last sort of three weeks leading into the race. He had a little stretch of the legs down the back straight on Monday morning and worked along nicely and uh, just did a bit of sort of easy maintenance work again this morning and uh, everything seems to be in order. He's happy and healthy and um, hopefully has a little bit of luck in running and, and he can show you know everybody that he's still got it. Brenton ensued as uh, a ride that you've got uh, on the weekend for trainer John Size. Um, unbeaten, two from two so far. You've ridden him most recently, and he was very impressive. Yeah, he did a good job. It was obviously a strongly run race um, with Pierre's horse bowling there on speed. And on the point of the bend, I thought he was a winner, and then he hit a bit of a flat spot. But then, to his credit, he knuckled down and, and moved strongly late and, and ran right through the line. So he is back in distance, um, but he's drawn well. You know, he'll be somewhere just behind the speed there on, on Sunday. And um, again, I think he's going to take a good improvement. I wanted to ask you about the distance because he did, of course, win over this course and distance on his debut. You then won on him over a mile and a quarter. He clearly is a horse that stays well. Uh, no sort of detriment to his chance coming back in trip. Did you feel he's a strong stayer? Yeah, I think he's a strong stayer. So I think, you know, obviously a mile and a quarter plus is going to be suit him really well. So a generally run 1800 will probably be in his best interest. But he's a horse who um, he he's not a hasn't got a brilliant turn of speed on him, but he just sort of sustains his gallop. And uh, I'm sure on um, Sunday, if he gets things to go his way, he'll be right there again. You would have, uh, I'm sure, had a, a glance at the form. I dare say he'll have a bit more to do before the weekend. But awesome fluke, uh, Silver King, would they look to be perhaps the biggest dangers? I mean, some of these horses now that are emerging that we haven't seen a great deal of are, are looking pretty smart and building up to, to what could be a competitive year next year. Yeah, I know Awesome Fluke pretty well from Australia. I rode him a few times, so uh, I know what he can do. He's obviously a WA Derby winner. and. Um, I had a lot of luck with his trainer back in Australia, John O'Shea, so uh, I know him fairly well. And a horse like Silver King, he looks pretty talented. Um, yeah, he obviously rolled on speed the other day, but James trialled him the other day. He looked nice. Um, so he's definitely one that looks like he's going to be progressive. Uh, Brendan, just finally, you're obviously you're involved in international races. Science Success is a horse you're going to ride in the sprint, but your, your book of rides on the undercard does look strong. So um, you must be sort of full of excitement and anticipation going into Sunday. Yeah, it's obviously a very big day of the year and uh, looking forward to you know, participating. And I'm pretty fortunate that the, you know, the four I won on are all sort of backing up again this week. So uh, obviously the races are probably a fraction harder, bigger fields, uh, and they were up in their ratings a little bit more. So um, they're going to need to be at their best and I'm going to have to ride them well, but um, we'll see what we can do. It's obviously a great day to have you know, some nice rides. Mikhail, great to see you in Hong Kong as always, and obviously a, a big meeting coming up. You've got two very nice rides in both the Mile and the Cup. Um, let's start with Tribalist for, for Andre Favre. He's a horse who's had plenty of racing, but he looks to be progressing really well. Yeah, exactly. He's, uh, he's a very tough horse. Um, he's, now very, he's, he's now mature, and, uh, and, um, and I think he'll become very competitive on, on Sunday. Obviously, Mikhail, you'd be fully aware that it won't be an easy task. There's some very good horses in the race, of course, notably Golden 60 and Co. and, and the Japanese. But with your horse, given the, the level of improvement, was this always the plan between yourself and, and Andre and, and Godolphin that you know you might well come here at the end of the year? Well, uh, to be fair, I don't know what the condition was, was going to do with him. But uh, yeah, the yeah the pre pretty busy um, season uh, at the beginning. Then he had, uh, he had a long break uh, during the summer. Uh, he just had to run uh, right now, and he's is, is in, is, is, is in very good shape. And, uh, and I probably think that's why he's coming to extend a little bit his season uh, in Hong Kong. It's noticeable that obviously the majority of his form in France is on sort of more testing conditions. Would you have any sort of reservations, sort of perhaps getting onto better ground come Sunday? 
Um, not really. Um, he raced very well on the, on the firm ground in Shanty just before he got his break. So, um, no, he's a very polyvalent horse, uh, very straightforward. Uh, so, I just uh, expect him to run his best on, uh, on Sunday. I imagine for you as a rider, you're very closely attached to Godolphin. It'd be nice to get those, those raw blue silks back in the winner's enclosure in Hong Kong. It's, it's been a little while at the international meeting. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's never easy to win the, the big race there, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to, to, do, to do good for them. Casper, a huge weekend of racing coming up, one that you're very familiar with, of course, with uh, success down through the years. It is, of course, the international meeting. You've got straight Aaron lining up uh, in the cup, and he's a winner of the, the recognised local trial, and he did that very well. Yeah, mate, he's in good form, you know, he's uh, peaking at the right time, coming off a nice group two win, and uh, obviously now game on with the big boys. It's going to be very interesting to see how far off them we are uh, for this race. I mean, he's in good form. Uh, Ronan did a great job drawing gate three, so it gives us a chance to put him where we want to and see how good he is. And hopefully if he can run sort of first four, first five, well, we certainly got a, uh, an inter international group one horse going forward. You've been here a fair while now, Casper, so you've seen a lot of racing here. That 2,000 metre start can be uh, decisive in winning these races, so, so three would put you in a good spot? Yeah, 100%. Um, yeah, he's a pretty, pretty chilled horse, so we'll just ride him where he's comfy, He'll probably midfield somewhere there, and then see what we can do, mate. You know, he's, like I said, he's in great nick, he's really, really fit, and uh, I'm really looking forward to the race to see how, how close we can get to them. You mentioned obviously finding out how close you are to them. Obviously, we'll learn a lot after the race, of course. But how far do you think he is off them? I know Romantic Warrior obviously is top class. Luxembourg is yeah. obviously a multiple group one winner. But yeah. you know, your horse—he he looks to be on that upward curve still. I think so. I think um, you know. I think I'll hit the frame. Yeah, I'll go out and say that. I think I'll probably run just behind them. Who knows? It's racing. You're in there with a chance. Anything can happen. I presented him well. He's, uh, he's in great nick, so we just got to need a bit of luck and hopefully we'll get, get a big result. Yes, but we know how special this meeting is for, for everyone involved, owners, trainers, jockeys, but for an, a trainer to, to have a winner on, on such a huge day, I mean, it, it really is sort of the pinnacle in some respects, isn't it? Oh, for us, yeah, local, you know, we love, we love racing in Hong Kong, but this day is magic. It's, uh, it's good to see all these people coming here to support racing in Hong Kong. I mean, the Japanese have got like 13 or 14 runners. It's, it's unreal. It's, it's going to be a, a great weekend. And uh, yeah, good luck. Hopefully Hong Kong can win a couple. Brenton, Helios Express, one of your rides on the undercard this Sunday, uh, for which you've got a, a pretty decent book. And what the horse did last time was quite impressive. Yeah, he's a talented horse. He's probably stiff not to be undefeated. And he's coming off a nice, nice effort there first up. So um, he's trialed in between. He's come on nicely. The draw is obviously a little bit tricky, but I expect him to go there and be very competitive again. Have you had much opportunity to sort of sit on him since then? I know John does like to, to keep his own riders uh, on most occasions. No, I haven't been on him since he, he won, apart from his trials. So, um, you know, I'm sure he's in good form. He's got the, the gate 12, so obviously it does make it a little bit difficult from out there. The type of horse that he is, has he got sort of the, the tactical nous and know-how to perhaps overcome that? Yeah, look, he's obviously got the ability to overcome it, but um, from where he's drawn, we'll have to see how the races are playing on the day. But there looks to be a nice bit of speed there with a couple on pace horses, and um, he's a horse that's probably going to, you know, John's probably obviously trying to get him out to maybe a mile on that. So uh, the main thing with him is probably to get him to settle and relax. So uh, wherever that may be, um, he's probably where we'll put him there on Sunday. No secret made that he's, he's quite a nice horse, isn't he? And I mean, what he's doing so far, Brenton, is, is suggesting that, you know, that there's a bright future for him. Yeah, look, he's got good ability. Um, you know, he, he tries hard. He was there in a dogfight the other day and, you know, he came out the other end and uh, I've got no doubt he'll improve off it. So um, he's going the right way and we'll see where his ceiling is.